Thanks as well. Good morning. My name is David Clark, for those that don't know me. Um, <clears throat> have you heard the story of the family in church? There's mum and dad and a little boy. And um, it was the end of the service, and the vicar's standing at the door to say goodbye to people. And the little boy's got um, a coin in his hand. And he goes up to the vicar and says, I'd like to give you some money. And the vicar was a little bit surprised at that. He said, oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, but tell me, why did you want to give me money? Well, said the little boy, I was listening to my dad at home the other day, and he was saying that you're the poorest preacher we've ever had in this church. <laughs> I, think, I think dad probably tried to disappear as quickly as he could at the time. I say that, if you want to give me money at the end, I'd be more than happy to accept it. Right, enough of that. Let's go back to the, the reading that Julie did for us. There is a picture of Jesus talking to Nicodemus. Uh, first of all, then, I think we need to just say, well, who was this guy, Nicodemus? Where did he come from? What do we know about Nicodemus? Uh, not too much. There are three mentions of him um, in the Bible, in, in the book of John. Um, but this is probably the biggest one, the one that Julie read. So who was Nicodemus then? Um, first of all, he was a member of the Jewish ruling council. So he was a, a pretty important person. He was a, a senior Jewish leader. And um, uh, he was a very learned person and probably well respected in Jerusalem. He was a believer in Jesus. Um, we got a, a glimpse of that from the reading that we had today. Um, but then in the two other passages, we hear Nicodemus, yes, standing up for Jesus, and Nicodemus actually being around when Jesus died and preparing the body for burial. So he was fairly close to Jesus in that way. <clears throat> and then thirdly, he was genuine. Jesus dealing with the Jewish leaders wasn't always that relaxed. Um, in Matthew 12, Matthew 12, for example, Jesus referred to them as a brood of vipers. I think if I started referring to you this morning in that way, well, our relationship over coffee wouldn't be that great at the end of the service. So, yeah, Jesus didn't always get on particularly well with the, um, uh, with the Jewish leaders. I think in this case, Jesus spent some time talking to Nicodemus. I think he realized that Nicodemus was genuine. He had some questions, he had, to, he was, had some uncertainties and some problems he needed to get sorted out, but he was genuine. He wanted to understand who Jesus was, what Jesus' claims were on his life. And so Jesus was more than happy to, to help him and to talk him through some of these things. The other Jewish leaders were more interested in trying to catch Jesus out. But I think um, Jesus realized that Nicodemus wasn't uh, in, in, the same, in the same vein as that. I think there's a lesson for us there as well. If we come to God with our doubts and our fears and uncertainties, God will listen to us. And he will, he's only too happy to try and help us out and try and help us to understand who he really is. If our only wish is to argue with God or even try to prove he doesn't exist, we can expect a very different reaction from God. But yet yeah, Nicodemus was genuine. He wanted to understand. He wanted to learn. Let's move on. I had a wonderful email recently. Um, it was from a lovely man called Mr. Edward Grant, who is the chief accountant of the First National Bank of South Africa and has $10 million, which he wants to give to me. I'm sure you've all had emails of the same. <clears throat> so I think I had about kind of three questions um, about this gentleman. Um, <clears throat> question one, um, is he really the chief accountant of a major bank? Hmm. Um, Question two, does he really have $10 million to give away? And question three, does he really want to give it to me, someone he doesn't even know? Um, it didn't take me very long to come to answers there. I think the answer to the first one was doubtful. The answer to the second one was very doubtful. The answer to the third one was extremely doubtful. Um, <clears throat> so it took about two or three seconds to, to work that out, I think, and find the delete button on the computer and delete that email. <clears throat> So, okay, Nicodemus also had some questions as well. Not to, don't need to talk too much more about Mr. Edward Grant, I don't think. Um, but what about Nicodemus? Nicodemus had some questions then. Who, who, was Jesus really the Son of God? Well, Jesus told him so. God said to him, God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, referring to himself as the Son of God. 
Jesus never said to him, well, just think of me as a good man if that makes it easier for, easier for you, Nicodemus. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. So Nicodemus, I think, took him at his word. Secondly, did Jesus have the power to give him eternal life? Um, Jesus was pretty uh, clear about that. Whoever believes in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm pretty sure that the word Godsmacked wasn't a, a known word in Nicodemus' time. I don't know how recent it is, but probably fairly recent. Um, but that's probably a good way of describing how Nicodemus felt. Wow, what is it Jesus, Jesus is offering him? Jesus is offering him eternal life. Does he really have the ability to do that? And I think Nicodemus came to the conclusion, well, yes, he did. Jesus was God. Last question is a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> Would Jesus really want to do that for him? Would Jesus really want Nicodemus in heaven? I've heard people say, well, I don't come to church. God wouldn't want me in, in church. The answer to that is, you're wrong. Uh, we will welcome anyone here. I think, as um, we said right at the very beginning, I hope everyone feels welcomed here this morning. doesn't matter what your background is. doesn't matter where you've come from, whether you come to church regularly or never come to church at all. You're welcome here this morning. And Jesus welcomes us and, and would want us in heaven, yes. Jesus wants to give us eternal life. I was talking to a group of teenagers once, and um, I asked them this question. Here are two pictures. Um, the first one is Mother Teresa, who spent her life working with destitute people in Calcutta, in India. And the second one is Adolf Hitler. And the answer I gave these teenagers was, who does God love the most? And the answer came back very quickly. Oh, obviously, Mother Teresa. My reply was, that's not the right answer, actually. You see, God loves us all equally. Jesus said, for God so loved the world, which didn't, it didn't say God loves some people in the world, but not as much as others, and, and, and vice versa. God, uh, Jesus said, God loves everyone, which really means that you can't do anything to make God love you more, and you can't do anything to make you, God love you less. God loves every one of us. That's quite difficult to take in, I think, but it's true. God loves you 100% already, whoever you are. And that applies to each one in this church this morning. Unfortunately, the world we live in, um, in the world we live in, we're all so used to fake news and fake offers, just like Mr. Edward Grant. Um, and anything that comes to us um, on offer at no cost to us immediately raises our suspicions. Well, it can't really be true. It can't really be true, certainly, surely. Well, whatever Mr. Edward Grant was offering me, whatever scam he was into, the only thing I could do was to be sure that my bank balance would go down and not up if I got involved. So there's no question of doing anything with Mr. Edward Grant. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, however, he was not after any favors or rewards. There was nothing in it for Jesus. The only thing that was asked of Nicodemus was a response to believe in him. That's all he asked of, of Jesus. Let's read that famous verse in John 3.16 again. What does it actually say? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That was the only thing that Jesus asked Nicodemus to do, to believe in him. I wonder what you were doing last Saturday. I know what I was doing. I was out in the garden. We had a, a, an old, very, very old greenhouse, which was becoming very dangerous with the glass falling out. So um, before it damaged some of the children in our family, I thought, right, I've got to get rid of that. So I, I spent most of Saturday last week dismantling the greenhouse <clears throat> and getting rid of it. Um, probably most of you um, were listening to the, sort of watching the royal wedding. I, I saw a few bits of it, uh, not, not much of it, but I did hear some of what Bishop Michael Curry actually said, who raised quite a lot of um, uh, interest in, in the press. And um, uh, I managed to get all this off of YouTube afterwards. So there's a picture of Michael Curry. 
And what did he actually say? Um, He, Jesus, died to save us all. He didn't die for anything he could get out of it. Jesus did not get an honorary doctorate for dying. He didn't. He wasn't getting anything out of it. He gave up his life. He sacrificed his life for others, for the good of the other, for the well-being of the world, for us. That's what love is. Love is not selfish and self-centered. Love can be sacrificial. Well, I have to say that I I got most of this talk kind of sorted out before um, last Saturday, so it wasn't just kind of copy from that. And I was quite amazed that what I'd already written down was actually quite surprising to what Bishop Michael Curry actually said. And, And I thought, well, okay, I can't go past today without actually mentioning what he said. And I think you can see the connection with the passage that we had today, with John 3.16. Whether that was the, the, the passage that um, Michael Curry was thinking about when he said that, I don't know. But it, it fits in very much. Very similar to what I said this morning. Maybe you're still thinking, well, I'm not sure all about this. I'm not sure, can I really believe who Jesus is? Can I really believe that Jesus loves me? Can I really believe that um, he can give me eternal life? Can I really believe that Jesus wants me even? So we have, we have quite a few people come in with doubts and concerns like that. So one of the things we have in this church is a thing called Alpha. Alpha is a course that runs quite a few weeks, um, and it's just starting in All Saints Marlow here in September. I've already got some people signed up for for the next one. Uh, We've run it many, many times in this course. Um, It's been um, attended by millions, and that's no exaggeration, millions of people around the world. It's been translated into 112 languages, in fact. So it's it's, um, very well thought of. It's it's a brilliant course. And quite a few people in this church have already done it and, and really found what it means to understand who Jesus is. So if you're interested in Alpha, then do talk to Roland or to myself after the service and we can give you further details. But I say it's starting in September and we're taking uh, names already for people that might want to come. It's going to be on a Wednesday evening. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for that verse that we, we just read, that God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And this morning, Lord, we want to believe that ourselves. We want to take that on board ourselves, Lord, that you love us, that you care for us. You have a place for us in heaven. Not because we deserve it, Lord, but because of what you did on the cross for us. So, Father, will you accept our thanks and our praise this morning for all that you mean to us. And we just thank you again, Lord, for your outstanding love for each one of us. In Jesus' name.